welcome back to Kids Club here in Craigie Hill Presbyterian Church. It's like spot the difference. I think our TV screen has been eating its porridge because it's definitely grown since last week. I think you should be able to see it clearer this time. How are you? Have you had a good week at school? I bet you're not enjoying having homework again. Oh well. Now, can you remember what we were looking at last week? We had a superhero, and yes, I think we remembered that actually it wasn't superheroes with capes and masks. We're looking at heroes of faith, and we're also learning all about God's armour. Can you remember what the first part was? Yes, it was the belt of truth. Now, we've got another part of our armour of God this week, and then... Where are you? You've got a task. Evening, everyone. Now, Ben, in a few minutes' time, you're going to be under attack. Under attack? Oh. Yes, under attack. And you have got one minute to one protect minute. yourself. And I'm sorry, but the only thing that you've got to protect yourself with is, is the, the toilet roll. Toilet roll? Yes. This is a precious commodity. It is. <laughs> So, so, so use it carefully. Use it carefully to protect, okay? So, one minute. Right. I'm going to get out of the way because I think there's going to be arms going everywhere. Okay, right. On your marks, get set. <gasps> go, Ben, go! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, uh, yeah, I think maybe go for it. Go, yeah, go, 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 like that. Yeah. Oh, like that there. Oh, oh, it's another. I would worry about your chest. Oh, the chest, okay, right, okay, Yeah, right. definitely, yeah. Oh, oh. This is not the quality stuff I'm used to. Oh, good. That, that, that is good quality. Please don't, don't destroy it. Oh, no, I'm going. I'm going. Here we go. Look at this, be, boys and girls. What do you think? It should be giving you extra extra strength and extra protection. Oh, um, Ben, do you know something? Before yes, you wait, I'm winning. Be, before you waste any more of that toilet roll, move over a bit. Oh, okay. Because, do you know something? I don't, I don't even think it's worth letting the attack start because it's pretty clear to see that there's absolutely no protection no. from the toilet roll. Oh. Why don't you lift what's over at the side? Will I take my toilet roll off first? I think you maybe should. Okay, okay, okay. Now, what have we got here? So, in the past, Soldiers, if they were heading out to, to battle, would have worn armour. And armour like this was designed to protect their chest from arrows attacking. Or you might even think today about somebody wearing a bulletproof vest to protect them. And you can see that's going to do much more of a good job. Mm -hmm. You can put that on because okay. here's the thing. In the Bible, it also talks about putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Oh, yeah. And that just means that God wants to protect us from harm. He wants to protect us and he wants to help and guide us in the choices and the decisions that we make. So Ben, do you think you're 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 good for an attack? Oh I forgot about that part. There's still an attack to come. Oh. Yes, I want to be sure I'm safe. Um, Boys and girls, don't you throw anything at the screen? Ready, let's see if you're safe. Oh. Oh. oh, oh no. Well, that worked. It definitely worked. It worked. So, remember, we've now got our breastplate of righteousness. Now it's time for you to sing a song. Now, if I give you some actions, I wonder if you can work out what the song might be. Can you guess? I think I know. Let's see if you got it right. It's Our God is a Great Big God. You need to get up and join in with all of the actions.
fantastic singing. You did so well. I actually think I could hear some of you right here in the hall. And your actions are getting better every single time. Now, it's almost time for the story. And Ben, do you know something? I was thinking we've been working so hard. We have. And, we have. and, and I just thought for the story today, yes. Whenever we're sitting down, it would be nice to have a wee treat. And, and, and whenever I was in the shop, I saw these salted caramel filled cupcakes. My favourite. And I just thought we could just sit down and listen to the story really well if we were eating at the same time. So, so, so Ben, I've what? got you, I've got what? you, I've got you a what? cupcake. Another and Ben, the other Ben, the cameraman Cause, Ben. Cause oh. that, yeah. Well, he's been working really hard. He That's, has. He Sorry, did you think I was talking to you? I, well, I kind of assumed, you know, you were looking at me, you were saying, Ben, I really like salted caramel filled. Oh, um, oh, um well, what do you know you? something? Maybe you can have mine and both Ben's, you can both have a cupcake. Um, I'm happy to share with you. That would be lovely. And do you know something? In our story today, it's all about somebody who chose to share what they had. Are you sitting comfortably? It's time for our story. It's over to Gordon. Hello boys and girls, my name is Gordon and uh, it's great to be here tonight. And it's great to see so many of you joining in every week at our kids club. Thanks for, for coming along, it's always good to have you. I have a great job tonight because it's my job to open up the Bible and to tell you about our story. And I hope you're going to all be listening really, really carefully. But I hope you don't just open your Bible whenever it's time for Kids Club. I hope you open your Bible um, every day because we get to read more about God, about who he is and the wonderful things that he has done for us. So I hope you're going to listen uh, really, really carefully. Our story tonight comes from the book of John, John chapter 6. And we're going to be reading from verses 1 to uh, 14. And I've got a few little pictures here to help us as we go along. And as I read through the story, um, I, I hope you'll be able to um, keep this in your mind and understand what it is that God is saying to us. Now we start off the story and Jesus is in a boat. Can we all see that? Jesus is travelling to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And there you can see where Jesus would have been uh, in that boat. And there's a big crowd that was following him because they'd saw all the wonderful signs and wonders and miracles that Jesus was doing, how he was uh, healing the sick. And Jesus went up to a mountain and we see the mountain there as well, don't we? He went up the mountain and sat there with his disciples. Now we're told that the Passover, a special festival for the Jews, was happening. And Jesus, lifting up his eyes, saw that there was a large crowd coming towards him. Here we have this large crowd. Look at them. Can you see them all there? Uh, so many people. Doesn't look as if there's much social distancing going on there either, does it? They mustn't have had to do that back then. That's just something that we have to do now. But here was this great big crowd. And Jesus said to one of his disciples, where are we going to buy bread so that these people may eat? Now, Jesus knew the answer to the question. Uh, he didn't need to ask, but he was trying to test his disciples uh, and to figure out if they knew that they should be trusting in Jesus. And uh, it says uh, in, in, in the Bible, Philip answered him, he said 200 denarii, and that denarii was the money that they used. He said 200 denarii, that's what you would need to um, work eight months for. That wouldn't be enough for each of his disciples to get a little. So Philip was not um, too happy at all. Look, look how worried he is. He's thinking, oh no. How on earth are we going to feed all of these people? We do not have uh, enough money. But then another one of Jesus' disciples, Andrew, who was the brother of Simon Peter, he said, there's a boy here 
who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? And Jesus said, have the people sit down. You see, Jesus knew what he was going to do. So there we have all the people. There they are all sitting down uh, and waiting to see what is going to happen. And now there was much grass in the place, the Bible tells us. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Can you imagine that? 5,000 people. I don't have enough fingers. And even if I took off my socks, which I'm not going to do, I don't think that I would have enough uh, fingers and toes to count all of these people. It's just going to be far too many, boys and girls. 5,000 people. Have you ever been in a room with 5,000 people? More than you would be able to count. So many people. And that was only the men. There were also women and children there. So there could have been 10 or maybe even 15,000 people there. And that's a really, really, really big number. And so what are we going to do? Well, Simon, um, Peter's brother, Andrew, said there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? And here's the little boy. Can you see him? There he is with all the other people in the background. You can see what he has there. He has those little barley loaves, very, very small bits of bread and a couple of fish. I wonder, is this little boy like you whenever you go to school? Has any of you ever taken fish to school with you like that? What do you think? Or little little barley loaves like that? What do you think? Has anybody ever uh, done that? No, I don't think that looks like your lunch. It's certainly not a lunch that I would take to work. But that's what this little boy had. But when you think about it, Five little loaves, two little fish. I don't think that would go very far. Uh, I don't think it would feed me. Uh, I think I would need a little bit more than that um, if, I was, if I was hungry and I wanted to fill myself up. So it wasn't really a lot. And, you know, they were right, weren't they? Uh, whenever they said, what are they for so many? Because it's really not a lot. But Jesus said, have the people sit down. Then it said that Jesus then took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So Jesus gave it out, gave thanks and then gave it out to all of the people. It says um, that he also gave out the fish as much as they wanted. And then when they had eaten their fill and when they had got all of the food that they might have wanted to have got, says that Jesus said gather up the leftovers so that nothing is going to be left well if you two little fish and if you had five little loaves and you gave them out to 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000 people I don't think there would be much left because if we were all standing in a line and people were to take their fill I don't think it would go too far would it but with Jesus it's different Jesus was able to take the little that was there and he was able to do a mighty miracle. And in the end, they gathered up the leftovers and filled 12 baskets with what was left over. And when the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. They knew who Jesus was and they were all in awe of him. And isn't that incredible what he was able to do with what they had he was able to give people so that they had enough to eat look how full they all are it's incredible to think isn't it so boys and girls what can we learn from this story today we well, you know some people might focus on the little boy and they might think isn't it great what he was able to do that he was able to offer his lunch and yeah that was a good thing uh, that he was able uh, to do. And I hope that we are like that as well in our lives, that we're prepared to give and to share with other people. But if we only remember that part of the story, well, we're missing the main point. It's not just about what we give, but rather it's about what God can do. And we saw how powerful Jesus was. Jesus was able to take a very, very small lunch and he was able to do something powerful. 
he was able to make it into enough that everybody was full. Look at this pair. They look full, don't they? Do they look hungry in any way? Do they look as if they're not satisfied? Do they look as if they want more? No, not at all. Jesus was so powerful uh, that he was able uh, to, to do this wonderful, wonderful thing. And what happened to the people? Well, they were full. They got everything that they needed. And more, more than that, not only was there enough for everybody, but there was so much more left over. Because you see that, you see, boys and girls, that's what Jesus does in our lives. He not only gives us what we need, but we overflow. And I want you to think of that here uh, this evening um, as we go together um, and we talk about this. Look, I've got my, I've got my glass here. And this is what Jesus does. Does Jesus just give us a little bit? Does he give us a little bit more? Or a little bit more? Does he almost give us everything uh, that we need? No, he gives till we overflow. Do you see that? And now there is water all over my table. But you see, that's worth it because it reminds us, doesn't it? that with Jesus, our cup overflows. He gives us more than we could ever possibly need. And I hope that's what you remember about this story. One, that Jesus is powerful. He is able to do all things. He is willing to do all things for us. And when we trust and obey Jesus, our cup overflows. We don't just have a, a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish to take the hunger away, but we are full and we are satisfied because that's who Jesus is and that's what he does for us isn't it wonderful boys and girls and that that's what Jesus can do for you and for me thank you Gordon for that story and everybody you listened so well now how did you get on with that memory verse last week it was really rather tricky because it was so long do you know something Tonight, you're going to get another go at trying to learn that really long memory verse. It's over to Jennifer with our memory verse. Hi, boys and girls. So Toby and I have come to teach you the memory verse. Okay, and it's the same memory verse as last week. Toby's been practicing it and I hope that you have been practicing it too. So it says, the Bible says in John chapter 8, Verse 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Wasn't that very good, Toby? Will we get the boys and girls to say it this time? So after two, boys and girls. One, two. The Bible says in John chapter 8, Verses 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, boys and girls, Toby was so excited with how well you read that verse that he's gone out and for gone out to the garden for a little runabout. So this memory verse that we were learning last week and doing again this week talks about Jesus and it talks about his people. Um, and if we follow him and we and if we agree with his word, so it talks about if you abide in my word, this talks about agreeing with him, asking him. We can ask him to forgive, him, forgive us for all the bad things that we've said or done or thought, and they're called sins. And if we ask Jesus to do this, then we will know the truth and we will be set free. So this means that then we can live with him for the rest of our lives and then even when we die, we can go to be with him. So it's quite quite an amazing verse. Um, so let's go back to saying it. So if you notice, some of the words are red and some are purple. And we're going to play a game called popcorn, okay? So we're all going to say the blue bit at the start and then I'm going to say the red bit, and then you're going to say the, the purple bit. So it goes from me to you, from me to you. Popcorn, or you could probably call it ping pong, actually, ping pong. Okay, so 
The Bible says in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, So said the who believed if abide my you truly disciples you know truth the will you well done i think i could almost hear you from here brilliant work now i wonder if we cover some of the words so let's see there's a wee bit there let's see Ooh. okay this time put your finger in your nose to say it so after three one two three the bible says in john chapter 8 verses 31 and 32 so jesus said to the jews who had believed him if you abide in my word you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set us free well done sorry set you free jennifer got it a wee bit wrong there but well done great job Right, I think we need to go even harder now. Let's see. Okay. So, this time, let me think what to do. I think, well, this is all about, Gordon's told us a story um, today about um, feeding the people. And it was all about the armour of God, the main theme, and it was all about the breastplate. So we're going to put our arms like this. So ready to say our verse? After two. One, two. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who have believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well done, boys and girls. Now, the kids at CHPC have got even bigger now. Oh, I wonder, can you do it now? So let's have a go. After two. One, two. The Bible says... In John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who have believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, if you remember the very first week when Jenny was telling the story, something a bit crazy happened to her. Let's see if this reminds you of it. She went upside down in the middle of her story. So I thought, well, let's keep with the theme and let's try our verse upside down. So after two, boys and girls, I wonder if when we get to the, the bit, the truth will set you free. If we have our hands like this to say it and when we get to the truth will set you free, we can release it because we're being released from all our sins and the bad things that we said or done or thought. So let's put, like, we've got our handcuffs on. And after two, one, two. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well done, boys and girls. I think I have one more. This time... I was having a wee bit of a back to front moment and sometimes my boys and girls in my class will have back to front moments and sometimes I have back to front moments. Sometimes my husband David has back to front moments where he puts his jumper on back to front. So look, the memory verse has gone back to front. So let's have one more go. So after two, one, oh, I'm going to get my hands again. One, two. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who had 
believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well done, boys and girls. There it is. And because you did such a super job, well done. Bye. Well, have you got it this time round? I'm sure you have. Well, it's almost the end. But right now, we're going to sing a brand new song. It's called The Lord's Plans, and it comes straight from the book of Jeremiah. I'm sure you're going to be able to pick it up really easily. Let's hear you joining in. Let's go. Boys and girls, can you believe it's another night finished? Well, we love to bring our time to a close and we hope you're joining in with us at home as you close your eyes and we, we talk to our Heavenly Father. So let's, let's, let's do that now. Let's, let's pray. Our Father, we thank you that, uh, Lord, you have plans for us. Uh, Lord, plans for good, plans for the prosper. Lord, we thank you that in Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, we see that. Lord, even this evening as we thought about how he fed all those people, Lord, we thank you that greater still for us he is the bread of life. We thank you, Lord, that we can feed on him and they receive a salvation. Lord, we pray for the boys and girls that they would come to know and love the Lord Jesus uh, as we at uh, Kids Club uh, Creedy Hill uh, do. And Lord, we thank you for all who've uh, taken part tonight. We do thank you for, for Gordon and Dee Jennifer, uh, Lord Hazel and Ben too. Uh, and Lord, we ask that uh, until we meet next week, Lord, that you would bless the boys and girls and indeed their families. Encourage them in their walk. Uh, Lord, encourage them to think upon you. Uh, Lord, even uh, to th in that you would uh, bring salvation, uh, Lord, to those whom you have appointed. And uh, Lord, these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, that's it for another week. But don't forget, we'll be back next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Bye. Bye.